Shalom, Shalom, Israel, coming back with another video. This video, I'm beginning to uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, the 28th and 29th verse, right? There is neither Jew nor Greek, right? We're going to get into the breakdown of that because many people, that's a stumbling block for them. Because when they read this, uh, they think it's talking about the actual Greeks, right? These heathens, but it's not, right? But we're going to break it down, right? It's the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. And it reads, there is, <clears throat> Salakia, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is no, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ uh, Jesus, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? So when these Christians and these other false religions um, read, this, read this scripture, right? They don't understand um, that these Greeks that are, that's mentioned, <clears throat> Salakia, in this scripture... Is talking about those those Jews who were Hellenized and were forced to call themselves Greeks, right? Because when if they were to call themselves Jews, they were put to death, right? They weren't allowed to keep the Sabbath days. They weren't allowed to keep the high holy days. They weren't allowed to circumcise their children, right? Because all who were uh, who conformed not to um, the way of the heathens were put to death on sight, right? So let's break it down. Let's get the book of um. We're going to go into the compact, Zondervan's compact Bible dictionary, All right? And we're going to go to the page uh, 207. This is page 207 in the Bible dictionary, All right? <clears throat> page 207, and it reads... Greece, uh, Greece, Grecia, Grecians. Grecia is Greece, the home of the Hellenians, right? Greeks and Grecians, however, are to be distinguished. Greeks are generally those of the Hellenic race, right? Because we know that the Israelites were Hellenized, right? So these Greeks that it's talking about is it's talking about those Jews who were Hellenized, right? It says, uh, and probably in the Salakia, it says, uh, but the word, Salakia, but the word may be used to indicate non-Jews, foreigners, and aliens, right? Because we know that these Greeks also is, is talking about the, uh, the, um, the heathens. So this word could be used to describe the heathens as well, right? But in this scripture, it is, it's clearly talking about those who were, who were Hellenized, right? It says, um. Grecians were Greek-speaking Jews, folk of the, of the uh, dispersion from the areas predominantly Greek, right? So Grecians were Greek-speaking Jews, right? These were the Jews who were, who were Hellenized and forced to speak the language of the Greeks, right? It says folk of the dispersion, those who were scattered abroad, right? Those who were scattered throughout the, throughout the earth, right? From the areas predominantly Greek, and these were those those Jews who were spread out over there in in in, in Greece in Greek with the Greeks, Salakia, right? Let's get the uh, let's get page two. Let's get page two and thirty three. Two thirty three, Salakia. Page two thirty three, right? In the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, and it says Hellenist. Jews who made Greek their tongue, and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices, right? So these Greeks, they were Hellenized, right? And it says Jews, uh, Jews who made Greek their tongue, right? So these Jews were speaking Greek. They were speaking the language of the heathens, right? And with it adopted Greek ideas and practices, right? They followed their customs, right? And they were, they were following the way of the heathen, right? So these Greeks were Hellenized. Right, let's get a uh, slack here. Let me see. Uh, let's get page. Uh, let me see where is it at. Let's get page. I believe it's one thirty-three. Let's get page one thirty-three. Yeah. Page one thirty-three. Diaspora. Right. <clears throat> And it reads, Diaspora, that which is sown, 
the name applied to the Jews living outside of Palestine and maintaining their religious faith among the Gentiles. God had warned the Jews through Moses that dispersion among other nations would be their lot if they departed from the Mosaic law, Deuteronomy 4 and 27 and chapter 28, 64 through 68. Right? Because our ancestors, you know, when they, when they, um, when they, when they were breaking the law, statute, commandments of the Most High God, right? He put the curses on us, and our people were scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth, right? So it says, these, uh, these prophecies were largely fulfilled in the two captivities by Assyria and Babylonia, but they were other captivities which helped scatter the Israelites. By the time of Christ, the diaspora must have been several times the population of Palestine. Paul invariably contacted the people in every city he visited, right? So when Paul was going out preaching to the Gentiles, those Gentiles were Israelites that were scattered abroad in a diaspora, right? Those who were scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. He wasn't going to the actual Gentiles, to the heathens to preach. He was going to those Israelites who were called heathens, right? Because they were following the customs in the way of the heathens, right? Uh, taking on their languages, taking on their, their customs, following their laws. Uh, keeping their their feast days right instead of keeping the law statute and commandments of the most high god so when paul was going out preaching to these gentiles he was preaching to to the to to our people to the israelites right the so-called blacks hispanics and native american indians those who are scattered abroad right so let's go back to book of galatians book of galatians right 3 and 28 it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. Uh, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. So he said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. So there's neither a Jew that, that knows he's a Jew. There's no difference between a Jew who knows he's a Jew and, and, and a Jew who is calling himself a Greek, right? He said, nor bond nor free, right? There's no difference between a, a Jew that's free and a Jew that was uh, in captivity during this period, right? He said, nor, felt, nor male or female. For we are all one in Christ. Yeah, because we're all Jews. Right? Just, these Jews were Hellenized. Salakia. They were Hellenized like we just read. They were Greek-speaking Jews. Right? So let's... um. Let's get the book of First Maccabees. I'm going to start... I don't want to read the whole chapter, but let me see where I'm going to start at. But you could read the whole chapter to get an understanding of what it's talking about. Right? Because it goes into it. And this is how you get the understanding of Galatians 3 and 28. All right? So like you. Um, I'm going to just start at 1. 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. It says, And it happened that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, Macedonian who came out of the land of, of Shedon, had smitten Darius, king of, king of the Persian and Medes, that he reigned in his steed, the first over Greece, right? So this is talking about Alexander, the son of Philip, right? He came and he, he smitten Darius, and, you know, um, the king of the Persians and the Medes. It says that he began to reign in his steed, the first year over Greece, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through, and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted in his heart, and in, and in his heart was lifted up, and he gathered a mighty strong host, and ruled over countries and nations and kings, and became uh, tributaries unto them. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. All right, so this, this uh, Alexander, right, the son of Philip, he, he, he took over many kingdoms, right? And he was getting ready to die. I'm going to jump down to verse... Uh, Seven. So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule over his own, over, so like it. And his servants bear rule every one in his place, and after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. Right. So during this time, right, the evils were multiplied in this earth. Right. He died, and and, and his servants ruled in his place. Right. Verse 10, and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed 
uh, Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seven year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Right, so after him came Antiochus. It says, In those days there went out there went out of Israel wicked men persuaded many, saying, Let us go to make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them we had much sorrow. Right? So in these days there were many um Israelites who were wicked, right? And they said, Man, let us go make a covenant with the heathens. Right? Because since we departed from them, we have much sorrow. But we know that the scripture tells us not to make covenant with the heathen. So these, these Israelites were wicked. They're going off. Right? I'm going to read down. It says, so, so this device uh, pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward they were so forward herein that they went to the king and gave him gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Right? So they start they start to do things of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Right, so they built a place of exercise according to the way of the heathen. And these heathens were going off in that time. Right, they were homosexuals. They were doing all type of wickedness. Um, and and that in this uh these places of exercise, right? And our people were going on and following and doing what they were doing. It says um, verse fifteen. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Right? So they made themselves uncircumcised. Not literally uncircumcised because you cannot be circumcised and then be uncircumcised. It's talking about they were following. They left their own customs and these law statute commandments of the Most High God and went and followed the way of the heathen. So they became uncircumcised. Right? They became like the heathen. Right? I'm going to jump down to verse 20. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. So like, and after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again the hundred and forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. Right. So after Antiochus, he went up to Egypt. He, he, uh, he, he, um, you know, he took over Egypt. The king of Egypt, these people fled. So after he went to Egypt, he came, he came to Jerusalem and to Israel. Right. And what did he do? He came there with a great multitude, it said, and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took the golden altar the, and the candlestick of light and the vessels thereof and the table of showbread and the pouring vessels and the vials and the censers of gold and the veil and the crowns and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. Right. So he went into he went into Jerusalem, Israel, and he, he robbed us of. Of all of our um, of all of our um, all of our things that we had there, right? All the things that we used to uh to um praise the Most High, right? He came and took all that, right? He took the altar that we used to sacrifice to the Most High. He came and he robbed everything, right? Let's jump to verse forty-one. It says, "Moreover, King Antiochus wrote this whole to like it. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people." And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to do the commandment of the king. Right. So he read, he wrote he wrote to all the kingdom and he said he wanted everyone to leave their own customs and to follow after him. Right. Because he was bringing about a, a, a new religion. Right. So he said and everyone should leave his own laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So all the heathen agreed with him. Verse 43. Yeah. Many of the Israelites consented. To his religion and sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath day. So there was wicked Israelites at this time too. They, they they agreed, you know, they consented to his new religion. They forsake the Most High God laws and statutes and commandments. They forsake the Most High God, and they started to follow the way of the heathen, right? They they, they stopped keeping the Sabbath days, right? They started to sacrifice unto false idols, right? Instead of sacrificing to the Most High God, right? Verse forty four, the king had sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem. And the city of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and and holy people. Right. So the king he sent letters to and by messengers to Jerusalem and said, "Look, um, we want you guys to uh, keep our laws." Right, you can't keep your laws no more. We want you to keep our laws, 
right? No more burnt offerings to to, to uh, and drink offerings and um and keeping the Sabbath days and keeping the festival days. Ain't, ain't no more of that. You gotta you gonna come and do what we telling you to do, right? Verse uh, forty seven. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean um, beasts. So they wanted them to start sacrificing uh, 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 pig, swine's flesh. And we know the scripture says that's an unclean animal. right? So they were sacrificing this on the altars. Right? And the unclean beast. Right? They were sacrificing this. Right? It said that, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation, right? So they, they, they made them stop. Uh, they told them, you know, don't circumcise your children no more as well. And we know that's a covenant between us and the Most High God, right? When you read the book of Genesis, right? So they wanted us to leave all of our laws and to follow the way of them, right? And if, it, if they didn't do that, it was consequences, right? We're going to jump over to verse uh, 56. And when they had rent in pieces... So like, and when they had rent in pieces the book of the law which they found, they burnt with fire, right? So when they when they found the book of the law of the Most High God, they were they, they were uh, burning with fire, right? Verse fifty seven. And whosoever was found with any the book of the testament, or if any consented to the law, the king commandment was that they should be put to death, right? So if they found anybody with the law with with the with the with the book of the law. Or if any, they found anyone uh, keeping the laws of the Most High God, what they were doing, they were putting them to death on sight. Our right? people was getting Hellenized. They weren't allowed to keep the laws of the Most High God. They were forced to keep the religion, so-called religion of, of King Antiochus, right? In this in this time, you know the Greeks, Salakia. I'm um, jump down to verse sixty. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. Right. So when the women were circumcising their children, when they found them, they were putting them to death. Right. Verse 61. And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had um, circumcised them. Right. So when they, they killed the women, they hanged, they hung the babies that were circumcised and they killed the, uh, the ones who circumcised the babies. Right. Verse 62. How be it many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed and confirmed. And themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore they chose rather to die, that they might not be defiled with the meats, and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So they so they died, and there was a very great wrath upon Israel. Right? So there were some Israelites that said, you know what? Forget all that. We we ain't getting down with this with this new uh religion. We're gonna keep the the laws of the most high God. Right? So when they when they were uh they rather they said man we'd rather die than to get down with, with uh King Antiochus, right? So many died, right? And the many were Hellenized and they were forced to keep the customs of these heathen, right? Let's get um Salakia. Let's go to the book of let me see. Let's get uh Second Maccabees. Let's get Second Maccabees, chapter, I believe that's six. Yeah, six. Second Maccabees, chapter six and verse six. It says, "Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days, or the ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew." So, in the, at this time period, when they were getting Hellenized, it wasn't lawful for people to call themselves Jews. Right, because if they were found uh, calling themselves Jews, they'll be put to death on sight. Right, they weren't allowed to keep the Sabbaths or the or the ancient feasts. Right, or or, or um high holy days. Verse seven, and in that day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifice. Right, because they were forced to eat of the sacrifice of this king. Right, they were forced to eat swine's flesh and unclean beast. Right, and when the feast of uh. Uh, Bachus was kept. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bachus carrying ivy. Verse 8. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifice. Right? So they sent out a decree and said, Look, these Jews, they got to keep our customs. 
right? They got to partake in our, in our fashions and our sacrifices, right? Verse 9. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery, right? So whenever whenever they found Israelites or Jews who didn't want to um, get down with the, with the Gentiles, they were putting them to death on sight, right? So they were Hellenizing our people, right? They were forcing them to get down with, with, the, uh, with the heathen and to follow their custom. And if they didn't do it, they were getting put to death. Just like we just went into the Donovan Compact uh, Dictionary, they were Greek-speaking Jews. They were forced to uh, take on these customs, right? It says, for, for there were, so like in verse 10, 2 Maccabees 6 and 10, for there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, and when they had openly led, uh, led round about the city, the babes hanging in their breasts, Hanging at their breast, they cast them down headlong from the wall. All right, so when they found these women and with their circumcised babies, they took the babies and they and they they dropped them off the wall, you know, head first. They killed them. All right, verse eleven. And others that had so like and, and others that had run together in caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered, to Philip, were all burnt together because they made a a, a conscience. To help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day, right? So there were Israelites who would uh, go off into the caves and, and keep the Sabbath day secretly, right? But when they got, when they were discovered, when they when they found these our, our ancestors keeping the Sabbath day secretly, what did they do? They burnt them alive, right? So our people were getting Hellenized, right? So that's what it's talking about in, 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 in Galatians three and twenty eight. Right, our people was Hellenized and forced to keep these customs of the heathen, and when they wouldn't keep the custom of the heathens, they were getting put to death on sight. So many Israelites were Hellenized, and they were forced to speak um, the language of the heathens. Right, like it says in here, back in Galatians uh, three and twenty. I'm gonna read it again. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So there's neither a Jew who who was not Hellenized, and a, and a Jew who was Hellenized who was a Greek speaking Jew. Right, there is neither uh, bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Yahweh Shai, right? Christ Jesus. And ye all shall like and, and if ye be Christ, then are ye then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Right? You jump up to verse 16. It says, uh, Now to Abraham's seed, now to Abraham and his seed were the were the promises made. He said, Not he said not and to, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Right? So he said, now to Abraham's seed were the promises made. And who were the promises made to? Let's go to the book of Romans. Right? Go to the book of Romans, chapter 9. And I'm gonna start at uh we'll start at verse four. It says, Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? Right? Because the adoption pertains to the Israelites who can be adopted back to the most high through Yahweh Shai. It says, and the glory and the covenants, right? And the giving of the law, right? Because the, the law was given to the Israelites and the service of God and the promises. So when it says here, now to Abraham's seed where the promises made. He says, who are Israelites? So it's talking about the Israelites right here, right? And we know that the laws was given to the Israelites when you go to the book of Psalms. It's like, yeah. Book of Psalms. Uh, one, let me see. I believe that's 147 and verse 19. Yeah. It says, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the law, statute, and commandments was given to the Israelites as well. So the promises, everything was given unto the Israelites. That's why it says here in Galatians, now to Abraham's seed were the promises made. And that's talking about the Israelites. Right? Let's get on. Um, let's get uh, another precept. Psalms 105 and 6. Right? Let's get the book of Psalms 105. In verse 6, and it reads, 105 and verse 6, 
O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Right? So that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the Israelites. So these Greeks were also Israelites. They were Greek-speaking Jews. Right? That's why uh, uh, Yahweh Shai said what? In Matthew 15 and 24. Book of Matthew chapter 15. Philippia. Book of Matthew 15 and 24. And it reads, But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? So he was talking to the those Israelites who were who were uh, scattered abroad, who were calling themselves uh, uh, um, Greeks. And following the way of, of heathens, calling themselves, uh, you know, Asians or whatever the case may have been at that time, right? These are he was he was talking to to these Israelites that were that were lost and scattered abroad, right? Just like how we we're lost here in the, in the Americas, right? We've been brought here to the Americas and we're we're lost. We don't know who we are. We call ourselves uh, African Americans, so it's no difference. We're saying here, there's no 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 difference um, between Jew nor Greek. Right? There's no difference between a Jew who grew up in the homeland and knows he's a Jew or those who grew up in the customs as being a Jew and those who grew up um, in the custom of the heathen. Right? There's no difference because we're all one in Christ. Right? But Lord willing, this video was edifying. To the next video, Shalom.